All right, everybody, what is up? So happy to have you join us tonight. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, for those of you who are just signing on, we're going to give people a couple minutes to join. So we'll start in just a couple minutes. Um, but while we get started, I would love to hear uh, from you all that are joining us tonight, uh, maybe where you're from. Um, and one of the things that I'm just going to ask Dan in just a minute here, um, a, a current book that you're reading that's like really floating your boat. So I would love to hear that from you if you have something where you're like, hey, I'm reading this book. It's, it's crushing it. Um, would love to hear that. Dan, uh, what about you? Uh, where are you? Where are you coming from tonight? And uh, what's a book that's currently floating your boat? Yeah, man, I am coming from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and uh, a book that I'm actually rereading that I read several years ago that's an absolute favorite is Michael Shabin's uh, The Yiddish Police Officers Union. It's a fantastic book. It's fiction. Um, it's a little bit surreal, sort of that magical realism that he's kind of known for. It takes place in Alaska, um, sort of like a, a different take on what would have happened had... Um, you know, uh, Jews following the Holocaust settled in Alaska as opposed to where they are now. So kind of timely um, in some ways, but really fascinating. And, you know, if anyone's familiar with Michael Shabin, uh, he's just got a real different, fresh take on things and uh, a really cool read. Love it. That's awesome, man. Um, that sounds awesome. I'm totally adding that to my list. Uh, for yeah. me, I'm a huge U2 fan. Uh, I went to Joshua Tree actually this year uh the, the place uh and obviously like we, we like super nerded out like we like went back and you know have the vinyl obviously and like went back into the, the gatefold you know photos yeah did you find like, place. We, like totally dressed up like bono on the edge my wife and i it was <laughs> awesome um and so yeah uh a current book that you know i i just have loved recently was uh bono's surrender uh which i actually think like one uh people have told me that i have to you know listen to it on audiobook because bono actually reads it and they're like man he sings a little bit and like does some stuff like it's amazing so that is something that has been uh, uh, really interesting to me recently. So sweet. Um, yeah. Cool, man. Um, well, thank you all for joining. Uh, thrilled that you are here. Uh, for those of you who uh, will be joining, we are thrilled that you are going to be joining as well, even though you're not here right now. Um, we are super pumped. I am Dr. Matt Allen, CEO and co-founder of Different Kind. Um, welcome to Different Kind's monthly webinar series on patient experience, where we take a look at lots of different aspects of patient experience. We usually talk about one specific metric that we measure um, and how do we improve that? And let's look at the data around that and the psychology. Uh, we're actually gonna take a step back this month. Uh, I'm super pumped about that and kind of look at patient experience as a whole um, and think about how that impacts marketing, um, which I think is a really relevant topic for the day. I've seen lots of the early meetings this year being, uh, you know, talk, this idea being talked about. And so I'm thrilled. I, I am not a marketing person myself, and so when I was saying, hey, who can join me on this webinar? Uh, thrilled to have Dan Bryan, who's the co-founder of Dentalscapes, um, which is a dental marketing agency. And Dan, I would love to have you introduce yourself. Uh, tell us a little bit about you. Tell us a little bit about Dentalscapes. And then we will get into it. Yeah, man. Thanks, Matt. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for the invite. And I got to say, you may not be a marketing guy, um, but you wouldn't be able to tell based on what different kind is putting out there. I love love the content that's floating around. I see on LinkedIn. Um, definitely um, always love engaging with what you all are up to. So very cool. Um, like Matt said, my name is Dan Ryan. I am the co-founder of Dentalscapes. We are a uh, digital marketing agency for dental practices specifically. I'm actually married to a practicing dentist, and I've been told for the last 10 years or so that I really need to get off my butt and start this agency. I have about 20 years or so, it's sad, of experience <laughs> in marketing, and um, it's, it's really time to focus on dental because I've been talking that world around the dinner table for the last 10 years or so. So I'm really excited um, to get into the game here. We offer SEO, PPC, paid advertising, um, reviews and reputation management. We're gonna talk a lot about that here tonight. Um, so I'm really excited uh, to be with this great group of folks and to partner with the folks at di uh, Different Kind and Matt. So thank you for having me here tonight. Well, thanks for being a part of it. Thank you all for, for sponsoring tonight. We are happy to have, have you on board. And uh, you're also a podcast host. So, you know, this, I think this is gonna be super fun. Like in terms of the format of the webinar, I'm gonna put up a slide in a minute here. There was like, hey, like, we're just gonna answer some questions. So <laughs> when Dan and I talk, it feels like we always just get into these discussions around like, hey, what do you think about this? And how is this, you know, how are you seeing it? And like, so we were like, great, let's just have that kind of atmosphere uh, yeah. um, for, you know, this webinar. It's not gonna be something where we're just like, hey, 
here's a whole bunch of slides that one of us is going to walk through. And then the other one's going to walk through a whole bunch of slides. That's not how it's going to go. We're going to answer some questions. We're going to have discussion. Dan and I might disagree uh, about some things that that's okay. Uh, so yeah. it's going to be fun. We're going to have a great time. So super pumped. Um, let's get into it. Um, hi, Eileen from Austin. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. What the heck is EOS? Uh, yes, for those of you who are not familiar with EOS systems, um, I have not read that book specifically, Love it. but you can imagine that it is, it is a banger. Um, okay, cool. So let me share my screen here and uh, we will at least give us a guide, a map, if you will, of, of how we're going to approach uh, the evening for all of us tonight. So give me one second. Um, okay. Yeah, Eileen, I'm very excited about your EOS reading. We actually run Dentalscapes on EOS, so big fan, big fan. Awesome. Um, cool. So again, thank you, Dentalscapes, uh, for being a part of this. Thrilled to have you here tonight, Dan. Uh, you're amazing. What we're going to be talking about tonight is, hey, Google reviews, NPS are out there. How do we actually go beyond that to provide focused measurement? to drive improved patient experience and practice growth. That's really what we hope you walk away from here with. As Dan mentioned about Dentalscapes, for those of you who may not be familiar with different kinds, um, we help measure patient experience. Uh, um, so um, we provide uh, this service uh, and software to groups that we work with, um, helping them kind of discover what matters most about patients, giving them you know immediate actionable feedback from patients about their patient experience super automated, really easy to use. Um, it really brings the patient voice into uh, what we're all doing as dental professionals, which as Dan and I will talk about, uh, super critical uh, in terms of, of really being the best practice out there, differentiating yourself, et cetera. So that is just a brief couple of slides about what we do, enough of that. Um, let's look at what our purpose here tonight is. So like I just mentioned, we want to understand where Google reviews and NPS fit because they certainly do fit, uh, then we're not saying that they're useless, um, but they are not the be all end all. And so how do they fit into the multifaceted nature of patient experience and practice differentiation? Uh, for those marketing folks on the call tonight, hopefully you're like, yes, this is right up my alley. Um, so in terms of plan, we're gonna set the table for a few minutes uh, before you eat a big meal, you gotta set the table. We wanna just make sure that we're all on the same page in terms of some definitions, like, hey, how do we think about this? How do we measure it, uh, et cetera. So we're gonna spend just a little bit of time there. And then Dan and I are going to really answer some questions about Google reviews and NPS specifically. Um, and then finally, we're going to talk about, hey, what's a different framework? How do we really provide meaningful measurement and, and use that to then speak to our differentiation as a dental practice, a dental group, et cetera? We're going to have some time for questions. So excited to answer your questions there. Um, and we hope that you walk away, right, with a framework to meaningfully measure and improve patient experience to drive improved experience, differentiation, and practice growth. Uh, that is what we hope you walk away with, some very actionable things that you can go put into play, or at least you can bring into to some of your meetings um, if you're working in a larger group to say, hey, I think we need to think about this differently. Um, so that is my hope for us tonight. Um, specifically on the questions part, so that's, you know, I said, hey, this isn't going to be a whole bunch of slides and whatever, and then here I am just like presenting slides. Um, but here's the kind of questions that we'll answer, and then I'm going to stop sharing slides, and then Dan and I are going to kind of get into some of this. So we are going to answer questions like, what is patient experience? Like, I think we all see that word a lot. Like, what is what is it actually? Um, what is NPS? Definitely have seen, you know, some people not understand that, how to measure it, et cetera. We're going to answer the question, what is the goal of Google reviews? Dan is a marketing person. I am not. Um, so we're going to get a different perspective on that of like, hey, what is, what is really the goal here? Um, why do Google reviews and NPS fall short when measuring patient experience? So we're going to dive into that. It's going to be fascinating. Um, I love this question. What's more important from a marketing perspective, Google reviews or patient experience data? Uh, it is not a binary here. Uh, this, is, this is a false, uh, you know, dichotomy here. There is, there is uh, not a, an either or, but we're going to talk about it. Um, and I also have it like, I'm super pumped about the meme I have to talk about this. Dan, Dan has never even seen it. So you're going to see it live. Everyone's it's going to be live. like a, like a YouTube reaction video. It's going to be the <laughs> unboxing, man. That all the like kids are, are doing these days, right? Like first right. time that Dan Bryan heard Rage Against the Machine. Yep. Um, so uh, what framework can be used to measure patient experience data and, or frameworks? Because there's not only one. And, and then how can you use this patient experience data to differentiate your practice? So these are the kinds of questions that we're going to answer for you all tonight um, and with you all tonight. Hi, Greg. Good to see you. Um, thanks for chatting in. Um, thanks for joining. Uh, if you have questions that you're like, hey, I really want to think about this. 
Um, I want to, you know, have you all talk about it. Great. Please chat it in um, or please use the Q&A function. Both of those are live and available uh, for us tonight. And we'll certainly add to the conversation. So if you have things that you want to talk about, let us know. All right. I'm going to stop sharing, Dan. Um, let's let's kind of hit hit the top of that um, in terms of, of setting the table. Um, so what is patient experience? And I'm going I'm to let you start. Uh, obviously, it's probably you know, a little bit more in my realm, but I want to I want to hear from you because I think there are so many misconceptions about patient experience. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I, that, that's important, right? That's an important place for always for us to start of like, hey, what are people thinking about this and whatever? So I'd love to yeah. just hear how you think about it. Yeah, well, you're putting me on the spot because obviously you're the patient <laughs> experience guy. Um, I like to think, though, that as a marketing agency, we take a little bit more nuanced view, um, you know, getting to the topic at hand tonight. For us, it, you know, Google reviews are important. I'm I'm not going to surprise anyone by coming down on that side of the table, but I'm also not ever going to be the marketing guy uh, who's going to discount the importance and value of patient experience and measuring it for your practice. Because... You know, one thing that I like to say, and, you know, I have a slide about it even if, if we wanted to, to pull that up, but really the idea is Google reviews are a marketing tool, right? And patient experience at the end of the day, the measurement of that, that is a process improvement tool. And so mm -hmm. you're never going to get to uh, the, the how and the why, uh, you know, Google reviews measurement like that, you can call it measurement. It's really about the what. It's a number at the end of the day. It's a number that, you know, represents your practice in some way, shape or form. But patient experience is really about how does that patient feel when they leave your practice? How do they feel when they they enter your practice? And I like to think about it, um, you know, and, and the, the clients that we work with, I like to ask them up front before we start an engagement, just so I get a better sense of what they're all about, what their values are, um, what their approach is to patient uh, experience. I like to ask them, how would you complete the sentence from the moment you walk in, dot, dot, dot. Like, what is it? What is it that's going to differentiate your practice? What's going What's going to be the feeling that you give patients? Not, not the quality of the care. I mean, that's important. Not the outcomes. Uh, but how do you make people feel? Are they feeling consulted? Are they feeling valued? I know, Matt, you have a background in shared decision-making and motivational interviewing. Like, are they feeling like they're part of the team in that process? Um, so that's what patient experience is to me. Um, but, you know, again, I'm a marketer. Uh, I'm only <laughs> one side of the equation here tonight. So I want to hear what you have to say. No, I love it, man. And well, I, so like before we, before I, you know, go into that, like, I want to, let's, let's pause there. Right. Like, because I think there's something that you said that's really important when people walk in here. Right. Um, and I've talked to enough uh, people who are in marketing now to understand that most dentists, and we'll get into this in terms of like the the, uh, the opportunity, I would say, for differentiation. Most dental practices are like, we'll treat you like family or whatever. And you're like, yeah, but like literally you have 25 practices around you that are going to say the exact same thing. Like there's yes. no one out there that's like, we're not going to be patient centric and we're not going to yeah. do these things and whatever. Um, so what's your take on that? I mean, like, if, I'm guessing you probably have to push dental practices a lot, yeah. dental groups a lot to like really have, uh, you know, a clear vision around that. And I don't yeah. see that just as like a private practice issue. I see that in DSOs a ton as well of like, you just don't really have what you, you know, how, what you really stand for, like what makes you different or whatever. And not that we're all going to be completely individualistic because there's like certain values that are going to be shared, but sure. I, I'm guessing that you probably see some of that. Yeah, you have to push them because you're absolutely right. Most practices are going to respond with something in in the way of, you know, we treat you like family. Uh, and, and that's great. And and I would hope that's the case for uh, most, if not all the practices out there. Of course, it's not. But I would hope that's the case. You know, where you have to go with that, though, is define the why and, and, and the how behind that. That's, again, why I say it's not about the what. The what, yeah. treating people like family, that's great. But how do you do that? And why do you do that? Why is it important to you as a provider? Why is it important to you as a care team? Like, why is that important that you treat patients like family? And so after you answer that question, the values question, which is super important, and I would encourage anyone on this call tonight to take a look at their website. You know, when they, when they come out of this call, take a look at the website and see, are you really articulating your practice's values on the website? Or are you only speaking in terms of what you offer, how you offer it? But talk about, you know, exactly like what's the why behind the what? And so you have to push people on it because people's gonna, people are all going to say, 
We treat you like family. Well, what does that actually mean in practice? What does that mean? Does that mean, uh, you know, greeting you with a smile? I would sure hope so. But but let's take it a step further. Like, does that actually mean that we're going to engage in shared decision making here? We're going to involve you in your own care. I mean, but imagine that. That's that's such a novel concept. But yeah, that's what it's about. You have to actually take it a step further. And so when a practice says, "Well, we strive to treat everyone like family," great. But how and 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 why? So I, I think it's definitely about taking it a step further. Cool. Well, I'm, I, I, we're going to come back to this because I think there's a huge discussion here, uh, and we're still in, in table setting, right? We're just diving in, like we're yeah. already deep, right? Like we can't can't help it, right? Yeah. Um, man. So let me let me share my screen real quick here um, because I think this is important. Um, so patient experience in general, right? I was it's funny. I was looking back at an article in Becker's last year, and they're talking about uh, like after one of their conferences, they're like, "Hey, what are the best ways to improve patient experience?" and you know, one of the takeaways that I get from that is like, pretty much you ask anyone and their idea of what patient experience is, is, is different, right? And you're like, that's actually probably, that's a problem, I think, for us as an industry, right? We should have an agreed upon definition, or at least a general consensus of like, hey, it's kind of, the, this is the same thing. Um, so this is from the Barrel Institute, which is a think tank that like really focuses on patient experience. And I love this definition, because I think it has different parts to it that are important, right? Some of interactions, right? So it's all of the interactions, like, all of the interactions. It's not just one part of it. And I think that we get uh, tunnel vision and dentistry around that of like patient experience is, you know, AI on the phone. You're like, yeah, that's part of it um, for sure. But it's not just that, right? It's the sum of interactions shaped by a culture. So for those of you who are out there, like culture doesn't matter, like it does. Um, and definitely it has an impact on patient experience that influence the patient perception. So I think that goes to what you were saying, Dan, of like how they feel, right? And how they experience that care across the continuum of care. Yeah, And so when we think about across the continuum of care there, if you, if you go out there and you Google like patient journey, uh, is one way of kind of talking about this topic. And if you've been to conferences recently, you might've heard some people talking about patient journey or seeing some maps of patient journey. My favorite patient journey map is this, <laughs> right? Shoots and ladders. We all remember shoots and ladders is an old version of it. Uh, some, some pretty awesome, like, Oh, my piggy bank broke. Uh, I love some of the pictures on here. It's great. But I feel like one of the things when we think about patient journey mapping is like, we think about it often from our perspective, like, well, the patient comes in and then this happens and then this happens. But it's like the really important part of patient journey mapping is empathetically getting into the mindset of your patient and understanding like, hey, if I'm clicking on your website and I want to see this and that doesn't happen, how do I feel? Right. Or yeah. if I'm trying to get an appointment and I just get offered a specific time and I have to sit in traffic. And now my, literally my viewpoint is like bumper to bumper traffic and frustration before I show up at your office and whatever, because I didn't get a say and like when I wanted to have an appointment, right? That to me is like a much more empathetic way of thinking about patient journey. And so that's what I always encourage people when we're thinking about patient journey is you have to get into the mindset of your patient. It's fine to be like, cool, they're going to do, they're going to click here. They're going to go here. They're going to look at our Google reviews. They're going to call. We're going to listen to the call, you know, whatever. Great. Um, and we should be then thinking, so how is the patient feeling in that moment? What are they thinking? What are they wondering? Like all of that stuff that is really going to allow you to not only understand the patient journey, but be able to optimize it and be able to differentiate your practice. So if we don't want to have shoots and ladders for our patients, right, which I think is often how it feels. Um, and we want to have this like very smooth, efficient flow. Um, those are the kinds of exercises that I think we need to get involved in. Yeah, I'm taking a note here. Remind me to avoid space 87. That's, uh, <laughs> that's I'm going to try to stay away from that. We never, never want to go, you know, all the way back down, right? It does. As you go further into the patient journey, the cost of a mistake gets higher yep. and higher and higher, right? Because all of a sudden, all that time and energy and money that you spent into you know, getting a patient to, hey, like we've, we've taken you from initial click on our website or initial search on Google to like, Hey, now you're in our office and you have a treatment plan or whatever. Now, if they'd never come back, right? Like you've spent a lot of time and energy and money. Um, and so, yes, we want to help you avoid the fall from, uh, you know, space 87, all the way, all the way back down. Everyone hates <laughs> that. Place. Yeah. Um, so thoughts there, Dan, um, curious. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, what you said about the patient journey. And it makes me think, you know, in marketing, we talk a lot about top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel, and, and you know, the journey in terms of a marketing experience. Um, but it's interesting when you sort of align that with the patient journey, uh, because when you think about sort of the topic that's at hand tonight, which is Google reviews, NPS, patient experience measurements, um, what Google reviews really are, they are the definition of top of funnel. 
So, you know, you, you are at the awareness phase. So you may have a little bit of an idea, preconceived notion of what a practice is all about, or someone has referred a practice to you and said, Hey, you know, I've had a good experience here. Check it out. You go and you, you know, instinctively look at their Google reviews. That's super top of funnel. The Google review may in fact, convince a new patient to make that appointment, to make that phone call, set up an appointment and come into your practice, which is great. Uh, so that's where I'm saying Google reviews are in fact a marketing tool and they're a valuable one. So we're, we can talk about the importance of that. And that's yeah. setting aside completely the importance of Google reviews from an SEO standpoint, which I'm not even going to bore people with right now. Um, but it is top of funnel. So you check out the Google reviews, you make an appointment. Great. You're there. But, you know, one thing that you, Matt, and I have talked about offline a lot is that, you know, a Google review can get you in the door but it's not going to keep you at the practice. It's not going to make you return. That's all about patient experience. And the kind of feedback that you're going to get through a Google review is not necessarily the kind of feedback that it's going to take to actually improve your processes and make it more likely that a patient actually returns. So um, I like your analogy there about the patient journey. And in fact, I think it really aligns well with this idea of the marketing journey um, wherein Google reviews are really top of funnel. It's an awareness uh, building opportunity. It's a um, opportunity to convey social proof and trust. And those are all very important. Um, you know, I, as a marketer, I'm never going to tell you otherwise, but <laughs> it's not going to keep you there. Um, and, you know, if you're investing all of this money in marketing, which most dental practices are, um, it's not cheap. Uh, you know, what are you going to do to actually increase the return on your investment for getting that patient in the door? Uh, the Google review is only going to go so far. It's really patient experience at that point that takes over and becomes more important in terms of, uh, you know, generating that ROI that you need. Totally. That's a great, that's a great bridge to, I think like what we can talk about next. Cause I think everyone understands Google reviews, right? Like they're like, cool, get it. So like, cool, you know, I think there's been a lot of this idea of NPS as an important thing for us to measure, whether we're an individual practice or whether we're a DSO or whoever we are at FQHC, right? Like we want to understand are our patients likely to then go out and actually tell other people about us, right? Which is the, the idea behind NPS. So let's first define that uh, yeah. um, because I think that's an important place to start and then how it's measured. And then we'll come back to this question then of like, cool. So is NPS the way to do it, right? And obviously like, you know, the answer is no. Um, you know, completely it's, it's, it can be an important metric, but I want to get your perspective there too. So I'm going to come back here, share a slide. What is NPS? Uh, I'm not going to define it with a definition like I did for patient experience. I'm just going to define it with a few things that I think we've all seen, right? Like, Hey, how likely are you to recommend this clothing company to a friend, right? Zero to 10. Um, how thank you for buying this thing. How likely are you to recommend our company to a friend, right? This is a classic NPS question. It can be you know, different numbers here, one to five, it could be zero, 10, you know, whatever. But generally it's going to look something like this. Of like, how likely are you to recommend? Uh, so that is generally what we see. Um, and, you know, here are NPS scores for some very prominent brands that we all recognize. Um, the top score here is a hundred. That is the, the very highest score you can get. But I think a lot of people actually are, are confused uh, because most scales go from zero to a hundred. Um, the NPS scale actually goes from negative 100 to 100. So if you have an NPS of zero, you're right in the, the middle, actually. Um, and so these are generally recognized as pretty high NPS scores uh, mm -hmm. by, by most people of like, hey, if you're in the 60s, 70s, um, you're, it's, a, it's a pretty high NPS score. Um, so how is this actually calculated? Because I think this is where a lot of people get confused then. And so um, we have a, a widget in, in our uh, platform that actually gives you NPS and gives you NPS over time. Um, so that's where some of this comes from and you can see the, the animation here, but if we have 40 responses from patients, uh, about that question of, Hey, would you recommend our practice, you know, to a friend, uh, if we have 40 people who are responding here and 32 of them say a nine or a 10, right? So they're like pretty top box on that. Um, five people who are passive. So a seven or an eight and three people who are below that, right? So we've got 80% promoters. We've got 7.5% detractors. We take away that 7.5 from 80% and we have 72.5% for the NPS score or not percent. It's just 72.5, not a percentage. Sorry. Um, so uh, you can see how then you could have, Hey, if you have asked 40 people and they were all detractors, right. Uh, that you are going to be a negative hundred because you're going to have all of the people actually detracting. So you're going to take zero 
minus 100, which is going to give you negative 100 for your NPS score. Uh, if you have equal numbers, that's going to be zero. If you have all promoters, that's going to be positive. And like I mentioned there, nine and 10 are generally recognized as promoters. Seven and eight are recognized as passives. And six or below are recognized as detractors. So you have to do pretty well to even get a promoter um, on, on, uh, in NPS. So Dan, thinking about this from a marketing perspective, Google reviews is not the answer to ultimately measure patient experience. It does some important things from marketing you know, perspective, and we'll talk about those more in just a minute. Um, you know, NPS thoughts just in general, hey, is this important? Is it not important? How should we think about it? I think it's important as sort of a bird's eye view of how things are going. I think it can certainly track sort of the trajectory of your business and whether or not you're on the right path. But I don't think um, neither from a marketing nor a patient experience perspective does NPS, you know, tell the full story. Um, and, you know, I'm a marketer, I'm a storyteller, so I'm always interested in telling the full story. And I don't think NPS gets you anywhere near that. And, you know, one of the things about, you know, Google reviews and NPS together is that they're not going to really give you that what can we improve perspective that say patient experience metrics, such as the kind that you're doing it or you're measuring a different kind are going to do. Um, they're going to give you a static kind of you know, just snapshot. It's sort of a moment in time, you know, what's what's happening, but it's not going to show you the why. Again, I keep coming back to the why. It's not going to show yeah. you the why behind the what. And, and that's really what you need if you're going to strive to improve. And so, um, you know, you can actually be a practice that has a pretty, pretty good NPS score. Um, and yet that's masking essentially everything that those detractors are actually thinking. Uh, you're not going to get the explanation of, you know, well, why did we have four or five detractors last week or, or last month or whatever? Um, unless you really dig into those numbers and unless you give folks an opportunity to genuinely and authentically, um, you know, articulate the the what and or the why behind the what, you're just lost. So I think it's a good indicator to keep an eye on. I'm not saying at all that practices shouldn't be keeping an eye on it. It's a good, good measurement in the moment, but it doesn't tell the whole story. Love it. Uh, I obviously think the same way. Um, you know, we, we do measure it, um, a different kind, but I think it's one of those things more of like, if you don't have that other data, right. If that's all you're measuring, which is, I think kind of the point of this webinar tonight, we'll talk about meaningful measurement in a little bit here. Uh, like, even if you're doing great, like let's say your NPS is 70, right. You're beating Apple and you're beating at Netflix, whatever. Right. Awesome. Good job. But why aren't you an 80? Like, that's my yeah. next question. You know, when I think from like a true, you know, like improvement mindset is like, awesome. Great job. We're doing some really good things, but like, why aren't we higher? Right. And you know, that's what I want to know. And why are we the level we're at? We still don't even know that, you know, we just know like, oh, we're doing pretty well. Um, so I, yeah, I, I totally agree with you there. I think that's, that's really important. All right. So that's kind of some of the level setting that we'll do. What is patient experience? What is NPS? I think we all have a pretty good understanding of like what Google reviews are. Dan, I want like from a marketing perspective, super clearly, what is the goal of Google reviews? Like, give it to me straight, give it to me clearly, like help everyone on this webinar and this, you know, understand once and for all, like, what is the goal of Google reviews? Yeah. So it's not surprising that most folks are checking out Google reviews when they go to find a new dentist. I mean, that's not surprising at all. And in fact, I don't have the stat in front of me, but the last I checked, it's something like 70 to 80% of folks are consulting Google reviews before they make a decision on a new healthcare provider, dental yep. or otherwise. Yep. Um, and so it's obviously very important from a reputation management standpoint to have good Google reviews, to have um, you know a, a good number of reviews as well as an overall rating, more importantly than that. So that kind of goes without saying. I mean, I'm not, I'm not making the big bucks telling you that. <laughs> um, but, but what's the, the cynic in me and, and I'm a marketer. And so I can be a little bit cynical from time to time. And what I will tell you and what I tell, uh, our clients is that the true value from a marketing perspective of Google reviews, at least in 2024 yep. is search engine optimization and local SEO in particular. And local SEO is essentially, um, a fancy way of saying, uh, your ability or your practice's ability to get in the top three spots on Google, which for local searches is what we call that local map pack. So those are those top three prioritized uh, results for local practices. You, you're familiar with them. It looks sort of like a business card. It's got a map. It's got a click to call. It's got the website uh, you know, button on it, all of that. And 
research shows us that over 70% of clicks on local searches go to those top three prioritized practices in the map pack. So you can see how critical it is. And, and the marketers on here know it's super important to optimize for local SEO and get in the map pack. So that's great. Google reviews are one of probably three to four ranking factors that are going to influence your practice's ability to get in those prioritized three spots more than anything else. And so they are mission critical when it comes to improving search visibility on Google. That's the cynic in me. Obviously, it's it's also about reputation. It's about convincing uh, Joe Schmo or whomever it is looking for a new provider uh, to convince them to to get them across the finish line, pick up the phone and call for an appointment. Um, so it's it's important on a reputation level, um, on a brand awareness and visibility level, but it's it's critical on a marketing perspective for SEO. So yeah. that's that's kind of where we're at. Now, what you didn't hear me say is Google reviews are mission critical for improving patient experience. I think you can gain a lot of value from them, sure. Um, and and the most honest of patients uh, and most genuine of patients are going to put a lot of actionable feedback in those reviews, hopefully, that your practice can leverage to improve upon. However, the real the real you know motivation behind leaving a Google review typically isn't to help the practice improve. It's either to um, sing their praises, um, you know, because you've been asked already, you know, we're 99% confident you're going to leave us a five-star review. So please go ahead and do that. You already kind of know why you're being asked for the review. And then if you're not satisfied, we all know what those Google reviews look like. They're not super actionable. They're not super helpful in terms of actually prompting uh, a meaningful consideration of what, what process improvement looks like. Um, and the other thing is if you legitimately have um, a helpful, constructive criticism for a practice, nine times out of 10, you're not going to see that surface in a Google review because there is something uh, to this idea. And, and actually, Aaron on your team, Matt, uh, we had a conversation about this and she she was absolutely right in saying that there's this dynamic where in Google reviews, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it at all. And a lot of people follow that that kind of model. Um, and they're not going to tell you something that's that's really meaningful from a business improvement perspective on there. So yeah, but but Google reviews, this is a long way of saying super valuable from a marketing perspective in terms of SEO, not so valuable from a patient experience perspective, as I think, you know, we're both singing from the same songbook on. Yeah. And I think like what you're saying, let me just like rephrase a little bit here. So super important in terms of SEO, you want to show up on the top, you know, you want to show up on your local SEO, someone types in dentist and right, like you're going to show up. Okay, cool. Yep. Well, you know, who knows how many patients actually are doing that? Like you might have more data on that than I do from the perspective of like, Hey, like, you know, I might go to my insurance website first and like find a few names and then be Googling that name versus just dentist or, you know, whatever, like yep. dentist near me. Um, but super important from that perspective. Right. So I think we can all agree on that. Um, but I think one of your points there is super critical in terms of like, Hey, most people are going to like do some sort of gut check, even if they've like gotten a referral from a friend or whatever, they're going to go and they're going to look at that. And they're going to be like, cool. Is this good enough? Right. So yeah. to me, there's this element of like, you have to hit a minimum threshold, but beyond that, it's like pretty much all the same. Like I would encourage, you know, a lot of people just to go out there and be like, Hey, you know, look at, look at a lot of the dentists in your area. It's like 4.7 to 4.9. Like a yep. lot of them are that way because people have realized they are important, right? So they pay attention to them and they're trying to optimize them and whatever. So if you're 4.2, that might be a problem, right? Like people might be like, well, like I, I can't trust that person. Yeah. But I also don't think you're saying that like, hey, this is going to totally engender trust throughout the whole, you know, like this isn't going to be the thing that's going to carry you through like problems once they come in and whatever, right? It's like, no, that's not how that's going to go. Yeah. Like I said earlier, it may get you in the door. It's not going to keep you there. It's just not. Totally. Totally. Cool. Okay. So if that's the goal of Google reviews, uh, um, that is helpful for me uh, just to have that very clearly stated, right? So uh, not the be all end all important from a marketing perspective, important for SEO, certainly. Um, so then Dan, like why do Google reviews and NPS fall short when measuring patient experience? I think you just got into that a little bit. Um, and I just want to provide my perspective here too, right? Because yeah. I think you just said a lot of important things in terms of Hey, like you're probably not going to get the full picture. You know, people I think see that often as a transactional ask, right? Of oh, like, yeah. will you do something for me? Is how it comes across often. Even yeah. if you had a great experience, it's still like, hey, will you do something for me? 
Um, and they might be happy to, but it's still a transactional kind of ask, I would say, in terms yeah. of like, will you leave us a Google review? Um, and so when I think about patient experience and, and why these things fall short is ultimately the patient experience is so multifaceted. And there's so many things that are happening that there's just no way that a single NPS measurement or a single Google review is ever going to, or even, you know, looking at all your Google reviews together is going to be able to give you really, truly granular feedback that you need to improve. Right. And so to me, patient experience, like we want to look at that across the spectrum, that very multifaceted nature. And so I'm just going to share my screen here to think about this, right. In terms of, I think you mentioned this earlier in terms of like not telling the whole story. Um, because I think that's super important. Um, and so let me share real quick. Um, here we go. Okay. So this is an example from one of our customers, right? And if you just look at their Google reviews, so this is like the middle of February, um, you look at their most recent Google reviews is what it says, five stars. They're so great. Like we love them. They're just awesome. They're just amazing. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, and you look at their MBS score. It's pretty good. Okay, yeah. cool. Like, so if we're, if we're just like high leveling this, right. Like we feel really good. Right. Uh, we go back to our exec team, whoever is, you know, we're reporting this data to, and they're like, all right, great job. Um, and then when we look at the data, like I said, they're a different kind of customer. They're, they're getting this, you know, private anonymous feedback. Um, that's truly around, you know, meaningful measurement. I would say, um, this is some of the feedback that they're getting at the exact same time. Right. So there are too many hygienists and people changing places during the visit. Right like literally like just a couple of days later, it feels chaotic, right? Another patient, different patient says the visit felt chaotic, right? Like we're getting these like very specific words. They're like, Hey, there is a lot of disconnect happening here. And you know, this patient is a patient for many years saying, maybe I just need an office. Like I'm thinking about leaving. Right. And this patient saying, I've been coming here for five years and this made me question whether I'm going to be returning. This is not showing up on Google reviews. This is not showing up probably on just an NPS question. And if it is, you know, you're not going to get this level of, of detail generally in that. And so you have these, and granted, this is just, you know, specific narrative feedback, but then we take that and obviously put that into categories and, and all of that piece, right? So this is the kind of stuff where I feel like if you're not doing this, you're going to have patients who are just going to be leaving. Your back door is going to be open and you're not going to know why. Uh, you might know it's open. You might be like, sweet, we're losing a lot of patients. Not sweet. Like we're frustrated about this. We're losing a lot of patients, but we actually don't know why I've heard this described recently as like, you know, we, we check to make sure that we don't have a hole in the bucket, it's like, great. But if you do have a hole in the bucket, why is that hole there to begin with? And we yeah. certainly want to understand that. And that's where I think like Google reviews and NPS are just never going to cut it, but want to get your perspective Dan, too here. Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny. Um, because I do think that Google reviews are misinterpreted and I don't think that they can provide you with anywhere near the, the level of data that you need to make informed decisions when it comes to process improvements. Um, you know, and like you said, uh, until you have that more detailed view of things, you're not going to be able to pull the kinds of insights out of it that you can. And we all know that Google reviews don't necessarily, and maybe something's coming down the pipeline that I'm not aware of, but Google reviews don't have an easy way to extract overall themes or categories from uh, the feedback that folks are providing like a system like different kind does. Um, and, you know, one thing that we talked about offline that has always stuck with me, Matt, is that we, we've talked about it. Google reviews do nothing to improve treatment acceptance. They do nothing to improve no-show rates. They do nothing. Uh, that, and, and they're not being leveraged in that way because the data is not meaningful enough. Um, and you're not able to extract the kind of insights that you need uh, to take action. And the other thing from a marketing perspective, something that really, really hurts me <laughs> on a personal level is that uh, by solely going after Google reviews, which, um, you know, for better or worse, a lot of practices are doing. I see practices day in, day out, prioritizing Google reviews above everything. Um, and I understand the temptation to do that. Believe me, I, I, it is a it is a race uh, when it comes to optimizing for SEO. And uh, I, I've been very clear with our clients that from an SEO perspective, there's not a lot that's worth more than a five star Google review. Um, it's super important. So I get the temptation to go after those. But it's really important that practices not go after Google reviews exclusively or chase that elusive 100 NPS score. Uh, simply because those two things do nothing 
to decrease your customer acquisition cost. So you are going to spend a lot of money. And believe me, the practices that um, are, are making waves are investing in marketing. It's just, it's a fact of life in this market. So you're spending a lot on marketing, uh, but by only going after Google reviews, and it, it's sort of like this vanity metric, right? It doesn't really do anything to move the needle in terms of practice improvement. And by ignoring the indicators that you need to actually move the needle and improve your practices, processes, and the patient experience, you're doing nothing to decrease that acquisition cost. And so at the end of the day, um, ignoring patient experience and the kind of feedback that you guys are gathering, um, it's a huge mistake from a marketing perspective also because you're not <laughs> protecting your investment. That's, totally. that's, yeah. Yeah, it feels like you're just kind of chasing your tail around. Um, honestly, it's kind of what it sounds like to me here. So this is a question that I think is important here um, and that I think you're kind of touching on. And this, again, this is a false dichotomy, but what is more important from a marketing perspective Google reviews or patient experience data. Um, tell, just, you know, give, give me your gut here, right? Like, tell me. And Suresh, um, I see you have your hand raised. Um, you can definitely chat in uh, either um, in the chat or the Q&A. So we'd love to hear your question. Thank you for, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you have, definitely want to address it. Uh, feel free to chat it in there. Dan, what's more important? I'm sorry, what's more important than... Google reviews or patient experience data, which one? Like, <laughs> so you're saying people, you know, and obviously it's a false dichotomy. The answer yeah, it is, is like, false. you know, both, it's a yes and question, but like, yeah. I, I think that, you know, I would just want to hear your perspective uh, and then I'm going to share my perspective. I feel like uh, as a marketer, um, it's my responsibility to um, really hit on Google reviews hard. It, it's part of my job. I am, I am required uh, by definition of, of accountability to go after those Google reviews for clients, get as many as possible, get the five stars. It's super important. Like I said, from a local SEO perspective, super important. But I think it's a short-term game. Uh, I don't think that um, you're playing a long game when you're going after Google reviews, because like I said, they do nothing to improve that treatment acceptance rate, to improve no-show rates. They're not doing anything to keep your patients at your practice. In fact, you know, someone may come into your practice on a uh, you know overall rating of 4.8 that they see on Google reviews, have an experience that drastically differs from what they just read online, and they're out. I mean, they're never coming back. So, what you need to do, I think, is tackle both. I think you have to go after Google reviews. I think you have to do that. You owe that to yourself to protect your marketing investment. But really, when it comes to protecting that marketing investment and stretching your dollars from a marketing standpoint, you really, really need to be looking at patient experience. I would say more than anything, simply because folks are not gonna stay with your practice unless you're actually working to improve that patient experience, keep it consistent, uh, be offering the kind of uh, service that that folks are are looking for. Um, and And again, you're going to pay infinitely more per new patient when you're when you're losing them due to the patient experience, then you will when you retain them for five, 10, 20 years um, based on the metrics that you're tracking, like the kind that different kind is gathering for them, based on those metrics, being able to make actionable improvements in your processes and workflows and uh, you know, integrating your values into you know the day in, day out uh, work at your practice. It's just so important. And so I would say it is, like you said, a false dichotomy. Don't focus on either one exclusively, focus on both. But really, I would say if you're looking to um, get a bigger bang for your buck from a marketing perspective, Google reviews are great. They're going to bring them in the door, but keeping them there and keeping them satisfied and keeping them happy and fostering and cultivating long-term uh, meaningful relationships with patients and lucrative relationships with patients, that's really going to depend upon the patient experience. And that's something that you're never going to be able to optimize solely on the backs of Google reviews. You're just not. Dude, love it. Um, you ready for my meme? I'm, I'm ready. I'm excited. Hold on. Let me brace myself. Because <laughs> I think it's it's super relevant here. Ready? Okay. I'm ready. So like you you actually just mentioned this. If we didn't talk about this before, and you've never seen this. So this is great. Um, I think that, you know, you, you mentioned this idea of like the patient comes into the practice, sees 4.8, has an experience that's vastly different, right? And I think that like for a lot of patients, right, whether that's what potential patients see on your website <laughs> or whether they see on your Google reviews, and you're like, hey, girl, like you're mm -hmm. Ryan Gosling out there. Like this is what it looks like on the front end, right? And then they like show yeah. up at your practice 
and it's this, right? And you're like, <laughs> it's not quite the same it. thing. I love and it. So my answer to this question, right? Like, should you focus on Google reviews or patient experience? It is also, you know, both um, because that is the smart answer. But um, I got to say, say, I've seen worse teeth than Voldemort. I know he actually doesn't have that bad of teeth. I'm, I'm actually pretty surprised here, just despite the fact that he's, you know, crazy looking. Um, yeah. So, That's but, you know, I think that there is this idea of like, if you do a good job, like in the practice, that's going to naturally outflow to good Google reviews as well, right? Like, right. and you you need to be able to set that up and, you know, whatever, but that's actually like what we encourage a lot of our customers because like we can, you know, direct them towards Google reviews after they leave the private, you know, anonymous feedback. Yeah. But it's like, we actually don't encourage them to do that right away because we're like, hey, we just want to collect some data and understand how this is going. And if there's things that you need to fix, fix it now before you start blasting everyone with like, hey, will you leave us a Google review, right? Um, because you don't want to, you know, run a like run foul of review gating or any of that stuff. And we're not going to get into all of that tonight. But I think that there's right. definitely this idea of if you just do a good job in your practice, like that is going to have, you know, lasting natural consequences that are probably much better than if you're just chasing Google reviews, right? So I think we're saying the same thing, um, but maybe different perspectives on it. And I appreciate it. So, um, okay, we've got not a lot of time left. We're like, you know, we're, 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 we're going here, man. I love it. This is awesome. Um, so I've got two questions left that I want to answer here. Um, the first question is, okay, so if Google reviews and NPS aren't the like framework to like truly measure patient experience, what is, right? Um, and so I'm going to share my screen here again, because uh, there actually is some really great, uh, you know, data around this. A lot of this comes from the UK. Um, and so just so that everyone can get an idea of the, the various ways that you actually can measure patient experience, right? Um, and so obviously we have a nice two by two quadrant here, more general or generalizability on the left and descriptive on the right or on the top. I mean, um, generally, like the way that I look at this is like, when we think about more generalizable and more descriptive, that's probably gonna take a lot of your effort, right? So in-depth interviews, focus groups, patient panels, if you can do those, 100% you should. Like, I think that there's gonna be a lot of value that you're gonna gain from like sitting across, you know, sitting in a patient focus group and like talking with them, right? So if you wanna start a patient voice committee in your organization and like have people who are vested enough to care about that, great. Like by all means, please do. Um, FQHC is our great example. They have focus groups um, that they, you know, that they do this with, so that's awesome. Um, but it takes a lot of time, energy, potentially money. Um, less descriptive and less generalizable. This is where the ratings fall into. So this is kind of what we've been talking about, right? Of like, hey, it's kind of a way, but it's just generally not that good. Um, and so then we kind of get into these other two quadrants where you have more descriptive or more generalizable and less descriptive surveys, comment cards, kiosk questions. And then lastly, you know, more or uh, more descriptive and less generalizable. And that's like really in-depth patient stories generally, right? So um, that also might take them a lot of time. They might not be vested enough for you to be able to do that. So I kind of come back to like, okay, well, then we kind of have this top left surveys, comment cards, and kiosk questions. Uh, I think generally most people think that the surveys are the easiest way to do this. Uh, there are other ways, right? Um, that is not the only way. So this is just the framework here that I think helps us understand, okay, here are how we can think about truly measuring patient experience. And, and certainly Google reviews or NPS can be a part of that, right? It's the online ratings piece, it's the NPS. It gives us a glimpse, but it's not going to give us a very generalizable, you know, description of like our practice of like, hey, here's all the various elements that go into this. Um, so that is, you know, what that looks like. Here's what I think about just in general, in terms of like, if you're looking for a solution to measure patient experience, a truly functional tool should do a couple things for you. It should get feedback from all patients, right? So one of the things that we sometimes see is people like, oh, I'm only going to ask happy patients to leave a Google review. Of course, like, you, 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 you know. That's what you think, but like what you really would want is like all of your patients to give you feedback. If every single patient that left actually gave you feedback, you have a really good idea of like the full patient experience and like what you could do to improve. So get it, or at least asking for feedback from all patients, I think is critical. Getting feedback from actual patients, which is obviously a downfall of Google because none of that is monitored, you know, in terms of like, hey, you can just be brother, sister, friend, whatever, or competitor and be like, hey, this place sucks. I hate it, you know, whatever, right? Like it's not actual <laughs> patients, can be whoever. Um, and then lastly, it's feedback that's transparent, right? So, um, and, and safe, right, is another way that I would kind of use to think about this, that there's going to be no retaliation, right? Like if someone leaves you a negative Google review, um, you might be angry and you might like, you know, not be happy the next time they come into your office if they do come back at all, right? So there is this idea of like providing a space, you know, for patients that is actually safe um, and transparent to you so that you can actually get better. It's not 
total ceiling effect or floor effect of like all five stars or all one stars. It's like, hey, like I would really love to hear from you what's going on. So th to me, this is any truly functional experience framework or feedback tool is going to give you these three things. Um, so that's, you know, me talking about patient experience, Dan, um, any thoughts there before we dive into our last question and take any uh, questions from the audience? No, man, I think this is all perfect. Yeah, I'm excited to get to the questions as well. Okay, awesome. So lastly, I think this is a great question for us to finish on, and then we'll go to questions. Um, how can you use patient experience data then to differentiate your practice? So you've gotten some of this more granular feedback. Maybe you've used one of these, you know, frameworks to say, okay, we're going to really look at this and we're going to, we're going to dive deep. We're going to move beyond Google reviews and NPS. How do you then take that data and make it, make yourself different than every other dentist or dental group out there? Yeah, man. Well, you're the dentist. So I'm going to give you the floor when it comes to actual process improvements and actually implementing changes to your internal workflows and, and workplace culture and that sort of thing. As a marketer though, what I can tell you is. So wait, wait, hold on before you go into that. So yeah. what you just said is like internal marketing, right? That's the way that I think about it, right? Yeah. Like when people are in the office, like they're still like deciding on, Hey, am I going to go recommend this practice or whatever? So like you've got to take that data and you've got to do internal marketing on that to 100%. differentiate your practice, right? So that's kind of what you're saying there, but go keep going with what you're saying. Yeah, hundred percent. From an external marketing standpoint, however, I think that most practices, um, you know, if they're, if they're looking at themselves uh, honestly, can do a much better job of actually telling the story of patient experience through marketing. So I don't see though, I, I see those two working hand in hand, really. So patient experience is something that you should be communicating to potential patients and, and reinforcing with existing patients even. And you do that through marketing and online marketing in particular is a great opportunity and has so many channels with which you can, you know, send out that message. So it, it yeah. it's, it's not I'm pause just, it again. I'm gonna pause oh, yeah. again. So what a lot of practices do I think here though, is they're like, we've got a lot of good Google reviews. And you're like, wait, hold on. Like, yeah. didn't they just look at your Google reviews to like try to get you in the door, right? So yeah. isn't that a missed opportunity? Yes. It's a huge missed opportunity. And honestly, you know, where I thought you were going, and I think, I think included in, in where you were going is that most practices stop at simply pulling some of their best Google reviews and plastering them across their homepage. That's basically where it stops for most practices. And really you need to move beyond that. And so it's like what I was saying at the beginning, you have values that your practice stands on. Tell the story of those values. Why are you doing business the way that you are? Why are you striving to treat patients the way that you are? Uh, what is it about the way that patients feel when they walk in the front door beyond just wanting to treat them like family? That's great. But again, beyond the what, tell the why and tell the how. And that's what people can be doing a lot better job, in my opinion, on when it comes to marketing their practices online. And you have opportunities to do that through your website. You have opportunities to do that through social media. You have opportunities even to do that through paid ad campaigns on Google or Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or whatever it might be. Uh, you know, and so we're always encouraging the clients that we work with. Uh, you know, in particular, it's great for dentists themselves, the practice owners, to have a founder's story on their website. Why did they get into dentistry in general? And, and why is it important to them to treat patients the way that they do? Um, and so there are so many opportunities. It's not the the place or time to get into all of that. If people want to connect with me after the webinar, I'd love to do that and have a conversation. But marketing at the end of the day is about effective storytelling, or at least effective marketing is about effective storytelling. And you can't really do that as a dental practice if you're not integrating the patient experience into that story. Totally, man. Well, I, you know, so I am not a marketer, so I don't have, you know, a marketer's answer here, but I'm going to speak from a patient perspective, right? I, I look at so many dental websites that don't talk about me at all, right? So Thank my you. encouragement to like all, to everyone, you know, here listening tonight, and if you're watching it later, right, like is to really look at like how you're saying, you know, how you're talking to patients, right? So is it I language or is it you language? Is it, oh, we have high technology and we have this and we have that. It's like, yeah. Great. Like that doesn't necessarily matter to me. Like what matters to me is what that does for me. Right. So you will have efficient visits. Right. Um, and maybe you're making me some, some like pretty lofty, like promises saying like, Hey, if you're waiting more than five minutes, we're going to give you a gift card to the Starbucks. And if you're waiting more than 15, we'll buy you dinner or whatever it is. Right. Yep. But like, Hey, like, what are the specific things and how does that impact me? Um, not like, you know, and it's obviously like, I care about your values, but I've seen way too many dental practices stand only on values. At, that like live on a wall that like don't get, you know, actually applied in practice. 
So what I would love to see as a patient is like, here's my value and here's what this means for you, you. right? And it's much more about that, you know, like if we're talking heading, you know, sizes and bigger fonts and whatever, like yep. I would say that, hey, you will feel X when you come here because we care about Y, you know, is is the way that I would, you know, kind of want to see that even. And so that's just for me um, thinking about that. And I see a ton of opportunity, you know, if you have true patient experience data to be able to say, you know, 98% of our patients believe that we involve them in their decision making, yep. right? Uh, you know, 100% of our patients feel like they receive culturally sensitive care when they come in. Um, you know, 95% of our patients say we, you know, have perfect after visit management, whatever it is, right? Like, tell that story differently than just like, hey, we have a whole bunch of good Google reviews. Um, to me, that's just a huge missed opportunity. And so I think yeah. if you have that more granular data, you can really tell a better story. I always emphasize the importance of mastering the humble brag in marketing. And that's that's exactly what it is because marketing is by definition promotional. It's self-promotional. That's the be all end all. That's that's the goal. However, you can do that in a way that that demonstrates your value by making it about the patient and not necessarily about you or about the practice. And so I love that you just said that. I mean, that's that's the idea. Yeah. Like let's be empathetic, right. Towards the patient. Um, and, and let's speak to that. I think is to me, that's, that's a huge opportunity. So again, I'm not a marketer, I'm just a patient. So, you know, that that's my perspective, right. I guess I'm a dentist too, but, uh, you know, uh, I, thinking about it from a patient is, is how I'm approaching it here. Okay. Awesome. We are at, uh, almost time. Um, and so the one question that, um, that I would like to address that, that came in, um, here as well, while we're talking to you, Dan, um, is, is just around the idea of, Hey, if you are already doing a good job at this, like, let's say you're art, like, Hey, you, you, your, your patient experience is pretty good. Like, is it important to like, keep measuring these things? Is it important to like, you know, get that 25th hundred good Google review or whatever, right? Like, do I need to keep doing this stuff? Is this something that happens forever? Or, you know, is this time bound to, you know, quickly speak to that and I'll share my thoughts there too. So I'm going to let you handle the patient experience side of that and that that kind of data collection. I will say from a marketing perspective, just for anyone interested on the call tonight, um, it is absolutely important that regardless of what your overall rating is, regardless of how many reviews you've actually uh, collected via Google, it is absolutely mission critical that you continue to gather those over time because there's this idea in online marketing uh, within within local SEO specifically that we call velocity. And it is very important that you continue to keep up the velocity uh, by which you're you're generating these Google reviews as well as just maintaining sort of your, your turf and, and holding your rating um, as high as it can be as well. So yeah, it's definitely important. Um, there's a lot of technical um, you know, considerations to be made there as well, but I don't want to, I don't want to get into the weeds too much tonight. Um, just know that, yeah, it's still important from a marketing perspective to continue to cultivate those Google reviews. Um, but I think, and I'm going to team that up here. I think it's, it's even more critical to continue to gather that patient experience data. Um, and I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you go for it, Matt. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, yes. I think the answer is yes. Right. Like there's in quality improvement in general and, you know, like, it's never, you never stop, right? Like you never stop. And even if you're crushing it, right? Um, and I would say for a lot of practices who are like out there crushing it, then they're like, hey, how are we growing? How are we, you know, adding another office? Like, you know, that is, you know, I think how a lot of people think about that. And then you have new challenges that come along with that. So a hundred percent, you know, to me, this is is a continual journey um, towards ever improvement and getting better, right? We're healthcare professionals ultimately and good enough is never good enough, right? And so that's how I always think about it. And if you're not measuring it, um, the, the, you know, it's, it's super easy for some of this stuff to slip. It's just like human nature. It's the way that it happens. You got to have data. You got to, you got to be able to look at it. Um, so yeah, that's my thought there. All right. Um, we are at time super, super grateful for every single one of you who joined. I'm not going to share my slides again, but I will say you are probably here tonight because you probably received an email or saw this on social. If you're like, Hey, this was helpful. Uh, maybe the next time that you get an email, um, or, you know, see a social post, share it, you know, share it, share an email specifically and say, Hey, I think you would love, you know, joining this webinar. We have these monthly. Don't hold me to this. I think our next webinar is on clinical skill. Um, that is, that is, uh, what I think, uh, that could be different, but that will be next month. Um, and so we will have a webinar on clinical skill. Does how good of a clinician you are matter, uh, to patients? Uh, obviously the answer there is yes, but I think let's dive into the data around that. How much does it matter? 
Uh, I think there's some really interesting things that we have in our data that we're excited to share. So um, Dan, thanks so much for joining me, man. Like we could have another full hour conversation, just podcast all night long. I love this, Suresh. Thank you for joining. We are really appreciative uh, of all of you on the call. We know it's late. So um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Grateful for every single person. Dan, any closing thoughts? No, I was just going to say thank you so much, Matt. You're right. I could talk about this uh, till I'm blue in the face. And I really appreciate you having me on. And I appreciate the questions. I appreciate the participation. Thank you all for joining. Um, it's always a pleasure to talk about this stuff. And really, um, I like to think that at Dentalscapes and at different kind, you know, we're doing things differently. And I think it's really important to consider, um, you know, a more nuanced view of marketing and a more nuanced view of patient experience and, um, you know, ensuring that um, we're delivering the optimal care and service that we can. So I, I've really enjoyed this conversation, Matt. Thank you so much for having me on. Yep. Thank you so much. And for those of you who care, we will share the recording tomorrow. It will have links. Uh, it will have, you know, all the things that you need in terms of finding resources. So keep an eye out for that. Um, we will see you next month on the Different Kind webinar series. Focus on patient experience. Have a great night, everyone. See ya.